Well, hello, hello, hello. Once again, we are back with this episode of the Summer Spotlight. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Gail Nicholson. I am your host. And today I have a very special guest that, um, well, I'll be honest. Today is Self-Indulgent Tuesday. Um, I have a friend who was at the opening or the reopening of the Westgate Hotel. And for any of you who know me, any moment that I can spend in Vegas at the Westgate is a moment of joy in my life. So I wanted to hear all about how it was, um, what kind of cool things they did. Um, I saw a little bit of a video of the, the celebration of their reopening, but I want a firsthand account. So I'd like to introduce you to my friend, Mr. Sam Novak, a freelance writer who owns Vegas Unfiltered blog.com. I am so happy that you could join us today. Thank you for being here. How are you? My pleasure. I'm doing great. It's, it's nice to see Vegas coming back. It feels surreal after all this time. Um, I have not had a, a lifetime experience like this before. And it has been so strange being in Vegas with nothing going on. And now that we're winding back, I feel like I'm coming back alive too. That's so, um, wonderful. Yeah. Now, yeah. You live in Vegas now, though, right? Correct? I do know. I know, yes. I, uh, I've lived here for almost two years. Uh, one of those things where you, you say to yourself, all I can do is think about being here. Let's move. Nice. So I did. I, I bought a house in the outskirts of the city, and it was, it was one of those things where you can, you can pick a house anywhere, great property values. But I thought I would want to be somewhere where I could be close enough to get the action in, and far enough away that I wouldn't fall into it all the time. So, <laughs> I totally, <laughs> I totally can understand that. Totally relate. <laughs> when when I when I was uh, relocating and I told my readers I'm going to try to maintain the perspective of being a visitor because that's why most people read it. Um, it has since evolved. I, I I think I have a broader view of the city now, um, but I still go into the city as if I was a tourist and I'll get a, a night at a hotel, two nights perhaps, and do what the visitors do because I, I'm, I'm going to be writing about the things that they want to know about. So I get in there and, and hit the restaurants, hit the shows, uh, check out the new places, walk the strip, and uh, then go well, back to reality, which is no longer a, a plane ride home. That's delightful because, gosh, the sludge that comes along with those plane rides sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> well, right? not anymore. Not anymore because now they're ridiculous. Yes, yes. I've had a couple of uh, flights since, since this all went down, so it's, it's nice to be able to observe what that is, too. Excellent. I'm, I, I wanted to ask you about that as well because I thought, well, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. First of all, um, a couple of your um, articles that I've read in your blog for example, the day after they shut down Vegas, I could feel the the just hopelessness and devastation and devoid of energy um, come through in that article. It must have been absolutely horrifying to be experiencing it live. It, it felt like a funeral. It did. Uh... When, when you know that the city has such energy to it and it's vibrant and the lights and the noise and, and the, the positive feelings that are coming off of people that are excited to be here. Yeah. And then to go down there that night and, and see it the way that it was, to have America's playground suddenly look like America's graveyard, uh, it's, it's something that I don't think that I'm ever going to recover from. Yeah. And, uh, it, it permeated everyone, everything here. Most of my friends are uh, that the work, work in the hospitality industry. Mm -hmm. So we were all knowing we were going to be losing our jobs in one way or another. Yeah. Um, we couldn't go do any of the recreational things that we would normally be doing. Mm -hmm. And our purpose here, in a way, was was stifled. Yeah. I, I, I was hard pressed to think, how am I going to? maintain a, a, a blog writing about the activities in Vegas without turning people off because the only things that were to write about were bad news. Yeah. So yeah. it was tough. It was really tough. And uh, some of it still is tough. But, is it, but, uh, what, yeah, what, um, what are you noticing as, you know, the things that are still not getting better? 
Well, there's still so many things that are under restriction. Mm -hmm. So, and, and a lot of people have not uh, seen any sign whatsoever of getting their jobs back, myself being one of them. I did uh, continuous freelance gigs for, for two uh, outlets. I, I write for Las Vegas Magazine, mm -hmm. which is, I would say, the most popular magazine in the city. It's the one that's in all the hotel rooms. Right, right. That, um, review shows and restaurants and tells everybody what's happening right now. You, you walk into your hotel room, you put down your bag, you find the bathroom and then you grab that mag. <laughs> yeah, and I, I that's exactly the order. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if my editor would like that, there, but um, it was really an honor to be able to write for that magazine because I always read it as a tourist. And the other site that I write for uh, is bestofvegas.com. Um, which is primarily a, a, a ticket selling based site, but they provide articles to tell you what they're selling. So I got to do things like Grand Canyon excursions nice. or uh, um, telling about new uh, restaurants. And uh, both of those things shut down. And there's, I've, I've had no signs of it, either of them coming back or at least welcoming me back. And that's just my own individual experience. Right. And I've been going with that three months of income. Yeah. Um, no and multiply of, that experience probably by hundreds of thousands hundreds of, of our, hospitality our workers. Right here is devastating. So the mood amongst my friends is pretty, pretty grim. I get that. I get that. Well, yeah, then so, that that made reopening weekend at the Westgate even more um, uplifting. Then wouldn't you think? It was such a true celebration, and um, there were there were a couple peppered in here and there from MGM Resorts and, and Caesars Resorts that had uh, their own galas. But the bottom line is they're, they're corporations, and they, they operate on that mentality. Westgate is a, a privately owned company, and uh, they're not so much about satisfying stockholders as they are about satisfying their guests and providing a, a really healthy, positive work environment. I see that as a, as a customer. I see that as a guest. I see that as a fan. So when they had their big grand opening, it was a true party. You felt it. People were glad to be back. The execs were proud that they had this team on their hand. And they, they threw a party that you would want to be at, not that you had to be at. That's and awesome. I was, I was uh, surrounded by my colleagues, um, people with live news broadcast, people that were doing Facebook Live, and there's a gentleman friend of mine who does a lot of live broadcasts, and he had gone to just about every one of the other ones that he could, mm -hmm. and I could overhear him telling his uh, viewers, this is the best party that they've done so far, this is the most spectacular grand opening of all, and, I, and inside I was like, I didn't have to read the other ones to know that because they're, they're truly happy to be back. And that's awesome. I can I can definitely back up what you're saying as a guest and as a fan of the Westgate. I've been there multiple, multiple times over the last couple of years. Um, and forgive the cross promotion, but it's my Disneyland. That's where I go to to play. Mm -hmm. And um, and part of that is because of that family connection environment there among the staff. I mean, the dealers remember me. Months remember later, you. you know, that's, that's one of the old school things that people say about Vegas in mafia days. So and so knew what cocktail I drank, they knew what game I played, they were waiting, hey, welcome back, so and so. Yeah, you still get that at Westgate. Yeah, and I want to say something else about that too because Westgate has they have restored old Vegas. You get what I'm saying? Yes, they, they have not wipe that look clean. They have polished it. Yes. It is yes. bright. You, you, you get that old Vegas vibe with, with a, a new electricity. Mm -hmm. you walk in there and you're like, oh, this is what they were talking about. Yeah. Yeah. You go down to the to the to some of the newer places on the Strip and they, they could be anywhere in the world. They could mm -hmm. be any city, any any office building. If you if, if we're talking about uh, Aria. <laughs> <laughs> they look more like office complex than they do Vegas. Interesting. And this is classy styling. You've got you've got your 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 crystal and chandeliers. You've got your marble floors. You've got your your brass fittings everywhere. Yep. And it's shiny and clean. Yep. And people are saying hello, welcome back. Hi, how are you? Now, my name is such and such. What can I do for you today? Right. And and that's something that's sorely lacking in the city. And I don't want to 
top down the city that I that I live in, but we have lost a few things along the way, and Westgate has brought that back. Wonderful stuff. I want to take a moment to give a couple of shout outs here because Mike Thompson popped in and said good morning to you. Um, uh, Mike, hi. <laughs> um, Dana Houston, Karen Geisler, um, these are a couple of my Barry fan friends that have popped in to, to watch the show today. And Megan McDuffie, just one of those sweethearts that uh, I love locally, has also popped in to listen while she's working. So I just wanted to pass along their greetings to you because awesome. from. If, if I could, Mike mm -hmm. Thompson, he's the head mixologist over at Edge Steakhouse. Oh, nice. Um, classy gentleman. He's done a lot of video uh, segments for them while they've been on hiatus, mixing up cocktails with Mike. I've seen um, that. That I have. That's, that's Mike. Awesome. Mike is another one of those old school, let's bring them in and treat them right kind of guys. I um, bet you he can make me a right fine sidecar. You can't uh, find a bartender I have that can no make those. No doubts about that. Mike knows everything, can do anything, and it'll make you feel special. So I'm, I'm glad Mike's there. I love Mike. Awesome, awesome stuff. Now back to that chandelier for a second. That chandelier w has been in the International Hotel since it was built. That is oh, I'm 51 years. Yeah, yeah. That is, and I love the fact that they they you know, restored, polished, cleaned it up or whatever. And it's still there. And it's still just as beautiful as the day that the International Hotel first opened. Um, have you ever had a chance to take that walk through uh, past the steakhouse, past the convention center, um, over to, well, to the large convention center? Oh, absolutely, yes. Uh, Where there's that, that hallway? The parking lot. <laughs> Well, that, that hallway of all of the old Vegas photos, I mean, that mm -hmm. itself ought to be a museum. It's beautiful. And I love the fact that they have those kind of things in their lobby as well. I was walking through there on Sunday morning looking at a uh, photo of, that they have framed near where the Elvis statue is. And it's got the uh, international sign across the top. It's shot from the forward angle. And there's a gas station right there. And you see... Um, I want to say it was Lola Falana on the marquee. It was one of those old school entertainers wow. in black and white, you know, with the uh, vintage car right there. And it's like well, the building is pretty much the same. Yeah. It still has that flair to it. Yeah. It, there, yeah. There's a look to that place and, and those photos all over with the stars that they've had there through the years. It, it, it makes it feel right. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. So um, let me see if there's a few other people that we can give shout outs to because that aren't necessarily aligned. Oh, hi, Terry. Uh, Terry English from uh, is is online with us right now. Um, Jennifer Romas. Is she a sweetheart or what? She is so real. Yeah. Um, uh, for those of you who may not know who she is, she's the, uh, she's the creator and star headliner of Sexy the Show, which is in the uh, Westgate Cabaret. Topless review. Um, Jennifer is a, a pillar of the community. She will dive into any charity that she can get her, her hands on, and uh, she'll dive into any bathtub to entertain you <laughs> on the stage. Um, I, I, I just love her. Uh, had, had the fortune uh, of going to dinner a few weeks ago um, with a lot of people, including Mike and Jennifer and Cammy Christensen, who's the, uh, the uh, president and general manager of the Westgate. And, and we just, yeah, everybody is just so real. Mm -hmm. and, and Jennifer is just perfect to represent that place. Um, got, can can I tell you a little a story about her? Well, not sure. about her, but about my idiocy sometimes. I was sitting in the I bar hanging out with a bunch of people after one of Barry's shows. Um, and I mean, it was probably about two, two o'clock in the morning by this time. So yeah, I'm completely blitzed, completely <laughs> blitzed. And uh, Barry's stage manager standing next to the table, we'd been chatting and he came back with this absolutely stunning woman, right? And I'm th sitting there thinking to myself, well, I've lost his interest for the night. <laughs> <laughs> She does grab attention, doesn't she? Yes, she does, and and deservedly so. But it wasn't until the next day that I was walking through the hotel and came upon a promo for her show that I realized that I was standing two feet from her face the night before and wanted to kick myself because she is <laughs> she's a leading, like, how do I want to put this? 
She is a powerful lady boss in Ooh. Vegas, where when you think old, in Vegas, you think old men in suits and old boys getting along together and, you know, rubbing elbows. For a lady to be as amazing as she is at what she does and then also be such an amazing down-to-earth person, I wanted to get her to know her so much better and I'm still kicking myself in the teeth because I never even said hello. And have you correct that since? Well, I friend requested her and she did, you know, accept. So maybe I'll be lucky enough to be able to interview her one day like I'm interviewing you. Well, and when you come back to town, we'll all meet at the I bar and then we'll head down to Edge Steakhouse and Michael with us have a cocktail. That sounds like heaven. One thing that's wonderful about Jennifer and Cami and all, all the other ladies that uh, work at the whiskey is that they're respected for what they do. Um, they are powerful, but they're not token uh, awesome. powerful people. I mean, they are doing their thing, and everybody knows that. That's phenomenal. You, you, there, uh, there's so many articles that have gone up uh, about the women of Westgate, and, and Jennifer is right there with them running her business, doing so many things outside of business, motivating people and being positive. And uh, love her to death. She has so many things thrown at her, um, like broken pipes or sick pets. And she just brings it all together. And it's like, we've got a show to put on, whatever that show may be, literally or figuratively. Right, and right. she just pulls herself together. And those are the things that make that kind of a team work. So yes, everybody loves Joe. That's phenomenal. Now let's talk a little bit about the I bar. I saw a picture, they've redone the stage and I am so looking forward to not dancing on the other side of a pillar from the band. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, they, it was against the wall if you were walking in. Mm -hmm. Normally the performers would have their back to you if you were entering the casino. Uh, now they're off to the side. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there's a little area for the, for the dance floor right there. So yes, I, I didn't realize um, that it was a permanent picture, but it seems to make sense. Yeah. That's the case. Yeah. Uh, it was so nice to be back there on opening day and have live performances going on. I bought the first cocktail nice. at the bar when it opened up. I had to ask because uh, <laughs> yeah, everybody was outside and collecting their free play mm -hmm. and you know checking out uh, uh, the, the casino. I went straight to the bar. Nice. So, Got it. Now get around noon. Yeah, afternoon drinking. <laughs> you can do that every now and then. I'm on duty, so to speak. <laughs> So yeah, the live entertainment was right there. Um, Who was playing? Oh, uh, you would ask me that. I was already one in before. Uh, <laughs> they, they had a whole um, they had a whole uh, series of uh, live entertainment that was going to be coming in all weekend long. Oh, they haven't so started their their actual ticketed shows yet, mm -hmm. but um, I mean, having performers right there it's one thing that we haven't had for three months. Yeah. And so that was actually the first live show that I had seen going on since I began. Really cool. Now, George Wallace is coming back, right? I would assume so. I okay. haven't heard of any of their shows closing. Excellent. Um, Excellent. And there have been a lot of uh, shows that are announced and not returning. Yeah. And a lot that are under suspicion or the possibility, I should say, of not returning. And I don't know if you've had a chance to see the article that I wrote about that. Um, um, I think that I did, but I don't know that I really digested it. You said that there's a few shows. Was Am I right in remembering, like, the Cirque du Soleil company is struggling really badly right terribly, now? Terribly. Um, they are about a billion dollars in debt. Oh. A billion. And um, just last week, if I, if I remember this article correctly, um, there was a, a protest by some of their performers up in Montreal. Um, demanding or requesting or pleading for payment of uh, a payment that they were owed before the pandemic and it even hit millions of dollars owed to performers that they haven't gotten. So when, when you're looking backwards and they mm. were already in trouble before this began. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that you are remembering that, right? I, I, I broke the article into three different parts. Uh, ones that would be short things, ones that were on the fence and ones you could kiss goodbye to. Not that I really had any joy in uh, you know, predicting no. any of these things, except for the, what I thought would be the short things. Um, Cirque du Soleil uh, was definitely in the maybe, and, uh, and I think at least one or two of them are going to go down. Uh, we don't need 
We never needed eight shows here mm -hmm. uh, from the same brand. I mean, at the end of the day, they went from having original content to building things around existing uh, properties, the Beatles, Michael Jackson, Chris Angel, but it's not even getting into that fiasco. Mm -hmm. um, so they, they, and they try to diversify in so many different ways that it's, they, they've gone too far. Yeah. Stick yeah. with what you know. Next show from Cirque du Soleil, Jump the Shark. <laughs> well, they did that with the last one that closed in a few months over at Luxor. Oh. oh, okay. Talk about a fiasco. That lost them $62 million alone. It opened up in October mm -hmm. and was closed by early February. All these shows have always started off with a minimum 10 year mm -hmm. goal. Right. It didn't even uh, make six months. It was, it was horrendous. And which one was that? What's the name of it? It was, it was a movie stunt show. I heard from a friend of mine that's Vegas local. Uh, he lives up in North Las Vegas. Um, mm -hmm. Does the same thing that you do every every few weeks or so. It comes into the city, gets a hotel, and parties like a rock star for the weekend. Um, but he said that he went to that and it was absolutely horrible. Mm -hmm. Which it was mind-numbingly bad. Um, it's got to. It's got to be the worst major show that this city has ever seen. How they even got past the proposal stage for it, I, I, I can't imagine. It was one of those things, it, it was extremely graphic, extremely violent. Um, it was not meant for kids in any way, which I don't have a problem with that. Um, for me, this is an adult playground. If you want to do adult shows, yay. But there, what, what the problem with that is, Circus Lake is already seen as a family company. Mm -hmm. So they were still, people were still bringing children to see this. And there were electrocutions, bone breaking uh, simulations, uh, a man with a metal hook driven into his face and dragged through the audience and off of a hanger swing. Uh, there were murders, uh, uh, a character that gets um, uh, interrogation drugs in his arm. Uh -huh. uh, it's just torture. This is distressing I, listening to you explain it. <laughs> yeah, uh, and, uh, I mean, I know I have a friend who uh, passed out during the uh, media night. Passed oh. out, so mortified by it. Oh, and it, it was awful, <laughs> just awful. So that was, you knew they were going down. Yeah. Uh, I think if, if, if if I had to pick on some short things to return, or most likely to, I would say Mystere, because okay. they're not part of MGM properties that operates independently. Um, so they can finance it on their own and perhaps buy it from Cirque if they wanted to. Okay. Um, o Bellagio, that, those two are associated. The water element of the Bellagio fountains mm -hmm. extends inward with, with uh, O. Okay. That show's not gonna go anywhere. Um, Maybe Zumanity could stick around because it's very low overhead. They've got a small cast. They already got rid of their live performers. It's a smaller venue. Mm -hmm. um, they already have a very low sell through price for their tickets. The other ones, I think, are, are in trouble. Well, so the big, big production are. are one numbers. show that I'm pretty sure um, ain't going nowhere, right? <laughs> has got to be the Manilow show, The Hits Come Home. What, do you, what are your thoughts about that? I would agree on that. Um, as long as his health remains, the show will remain. That's, that's my only worry for him. Um, he's still a, a powerhouse performer. He's great at what he does. His fans will come no matter what, um, but my only concern is the fact that he's elderly and he's frail and he's had his own concerns. Um, as we were talking before the show began, I, I went to the premiere and flew into Vegas to find out he was hospitalized. From, yeah, uh, that Mills. was two years ago now, 2018? Maybe even in 2017. I, I should know better, but uh, yeah. I it, think you're it, right. But uh, that, that would be the only thing that I think would, would put his, his likelihood of return in any kind of a problem. I mean, they've already announced new dates. They've extended it into next year. It's it's one of those things that people would want to come to the city for. So we need that yes. show. Yeah, absolutely. 
Absolutely. Um, yeah, one of, and I'm paraphrasing a, a quote that I once read from Mr. Siegel. It might have been in one of your publications at the time. I'm not positive. But essentially to the effect that Barry Manilow has a place to play as long as he's alive here at the end. <laughs> okay, right? as, long, as long as he wants to keep doing the show, we will have him. So I, I send my thanks to Mr. Siegel as well, uh, because that's part of what that family vibe generates from the top. Mr. Siegel mm -hmm. is the source of it. It, it wasn't present at, when that hotel was under the Hilton banner. I'll say that. It, it, it was just another corporate outlet back then. Yeah. I, I was at the, uh, the 50th anniversary celebration, and when the mayor was speaking to the crowd and addressing Mr. Siegel uh, directly, he was only two or three people away from me, and I, instead of watching the podium, I was watching him just smiling from ear to ear. It was excitement. It was pride in, in, in everything that was going on around him, and you are right. It does come from the top. That's phenomenal. Well, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me today about all that's going on at the Westgate. Um, if you ever have any more tidbits that you want to toss my way, I would love to have you on again. Absolutely. I'd love to see that. And thank do you, you. You're very welcome. My pleasure. Um, do you have any final thoughts for our audience today? Um, I would say if, if you're thinking about coming to Vegas, Research what your choices are going to be. Plan ahead, especially if you're if you're concerned about the COVID situation. Um, research your, your the way you're going to get here. Choose your airline wisely. Choose your hotel wisely. Um, they all have plans in place for, for your protection. And of of all of them, I'll, I'll name drop Westgate one more time because their efforts are, are way beyond anything that I've seen in the others. So um, I stayed here this weekend. I felt completely protected and secure. I never had any concerns whatsoever. And um, I would say that's a great place to start if you're thinking about coming back to Vegas. Uh, plan wisely and have a good time. Fantastic. Again, thank you so much, Sam. Have a fantastic week, and we'll talk to you again soon. When you do actual energy work, makes that recovery progress so much faster. That recovery is possible. You do not have to live as a victim until your last days. You have unbelievable strength, and I know that because you're still here. Do you want to create something completely unrecognizable with your life? I can show you how.